In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure a zump spot. My name is Tyler, and welcome back to the channel. When configuring the zump spot, it could be a little tricky, so I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, in my earlier video, I showed you how to put together a zump spot, so now I figured we'll show you how to configure one. Um, it's very easy to do, but could be a little tricky. So. Uh, whenever you have your zone spot put together and have it powered on, um, you wait about 10, 15, maybe 30 seconds, minute tops, and you wait for it to boot up. After it boots up, you'll come over to your computer, and you'll come down here to the bottom right, and you'll look, click on your network, and you'll look for a Wi-Fi that says Pi-Star. What you'll want to do is push connect, type in the password as raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y, and click connect. And then it'll ask if you're another setting, and just go ahead and click yes or no. It doesn't matter on that one. It'll still connect. And then it'll say, it'll connect, and it'll go no internet, slash secured. So after that's done, you'll come down to a web browser. I happen to use Firefox. And you come up to the address bar, you type in http colon forward slash forward slash pi dash star. And then this will come up and it will redirect you to configurations in about 10 seconds. And when it does that, it will ask for a um, username and a password. And there's the box. It will look something along these lines. Uh, the username is pi dash star and the password is R A S P B E R Y. And you'll push OK. Then it'll take you to the configurations. Okay. Um, my suggestion is to you do not change the host name. If you change this to your call sign, then whenever you type up here in the address bar, pi, the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, instead of putting pi dash star, you'll end up putting your call sign. But if you do not change this host name, then each time you want to access your pi, you just go to the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash pi dash star. In the node call sign, you'll put your call sign. My call sign is W9. Oops, W9KTL. Next setting you'd want to do is choose a radio frequency. It can be any frequency you want. I happen to choose 430.500. Okay, then you'll enter your latitude and longitude. I put near my house, I don't put directly on it, but I will wait and do that later. And then here you put your town. If I can type. And then you'll put your country and on the URL um, I use QRZ my QRZ page um, it's fairly easy to do I just go to the page and I just copy and paste it um, that will whenever your name pops up in the pi star dashboard like up here I'll show you that here in a little, little bit um, anytime someone clicks on your name, you, they'll be moved over to your QRZ page. I do recommend that. In the radio slash modem type, I use this one, the STM32-DVM slash MMDVM underscore HS dash Raspberry Pi hat. Um, it works for me. And that's how I've set up both my hotspots. In this node type, if it's set to private, only you can talk to it. That has your any digital radio that has your call sign on it is the only one that the Pi will receive. If you set it to public, anybody can talk on. I have mine set to public because I have another ham that may end up talking on mine on a, if we go to travel to a ham fest. So I will set mine to public. The APRS host. 
is who's going to be processing and showing it on the APRS map. Um, I scroll down and I use the indiana.aprs2.net. Um, that's just the one I choose because it's closest to my location. Uh, my time zone is still this one, the America Chicago. I'm in the central time zone. Um, the dashboard language, I will look for English underscore US. Uh, and then whenever I get done with that, I click apply changes. And then it'll, it'll take roughly about 10 seconds to do. And I, when you click apply changes, it'll save all your settings. So give it a little time to do that. Okay. And whenever your savings are set, you'll see this page. All right. I just clicked yes. Okay. Now that you've seen that it's changed after we set all the general configurations up, you'll see that you'll see the MMDVM host configurations. This is where you can click for DMR, DSTAR, YSF, P25, NXDN, uh, YSF to DMR, and so on. And if you have a display. And then currently I do not have a display. But before I do that, I will come down here to the wireless configurations. Um, this is how you configure your Wi-Fi and get, a con get your some spot to connect to the internet. You'll click on configure Wi-Fi. And currently I had this previous setup, so I kind of already had this connected to a couple Wi-Fi's. So I still need to connect it to a new Wi-Fi, so I'll go scan for networks for 10 seconds. Okay, and I will select my Wi-Fi and then type in the password. Okay, and then you'll go save and connect. Okay, and then I'll click that a couple times. After you configure your Wi-Fi, um, I suggest turning your Pi off. Wait for about five to 10 seconds. Turn it back on. Close your web browser. And then try to, and then once your Pi boots up after say 30 seconds, give it time to connect, start up, boot up, and connect to the Wi Fi. I suggest closing your web browser and then um, open your web browser back up, go up to the address bar, type in the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash Pi dash star. Um, when you do that, sometimes it does not pop up when you do that. Um, it has to do something with your network because I know mine had trouble doing it. So I would log into your router. If you have a smart router, you might be able to get it from your phone, but look up via through the router, accessing the router through your web browser and look up the IP address. So instead of using the pi dash HTTP pi dash star in the web browser, you'll type in the IP address. And as you can see here, I typed in the IP address up here and I'm into my configurations. To me, it's just easier to use the IP address because once I get used to it, I'm able to remember it and just type it in and I'm good, good to go to change all my settings. But since the Wi-Fi is set up, we're going to move all the way up to the top and select the MMDVM host configurations. Um, I do have a DMR radio, so I'm gonna turn that one on. And I have a, Ye a YSF radio, or Yezu System Fusion radio. So I'm gonna turn that one on. And I'm gonna come down here and, to, and apply changes. Okay. And once you save that, you're gonna be greeted with this screen again, and it'll say done, changes applied, starting services. Go ahead and click OK. Right. Then down here in the general configurations, there's going to be one more added thing. It says ask for your DMR ID. If you know that, go ahead and put it in. If you don't, um, 
then you don't worry about it. Uh, but as long as you don't, if you select the DMR mode, you'll s see the DMR ID show up. If you don't click on DMR mode and make it to where it showed, this will not show up. And then you'll type in your DMR ID here. Okay. Then you'll go ahead and push apply changes. And after you type in your DMR ID and you've saved your changes, um, go ahead down here to the DMR configurations. I use to the DMR master. Since I live in America, I'll, I always use the BM for stands for Brandmeister underscore United States underscore 3101. That's the one I always use. Okay. In this hotspot security, I kind of just leave blank. Um, I choose none on this one. And then the DMR caller code, I just check, click, click on one. Just use number one. Um, if you change this caller code to two, three, four, or whichever, in that list um, you'll have to change the, t the caller code in your radio to match it or they will not talk and then I don't do anything with these two and then I'll click apply changes okay after setting the my DMR configurations I will move down here to the Yezu system fusion configurations and those on the system fusion side you don't it, you don't really have to do much you just have to click what room you want um, Anytime you want to change the room, you have to access the the dashboard, go into configurations, and change rooms that way. Um, there may be a simpler way, but I have not figured that one out yet. I'm still playing around with it and learning. So I suggest just messing around with your Zumspot and going that route. On mine see if I could find it here you can see there's a bunch of different rooms uh, America rag chew America link are some big ones to go and join um, the one I choose is the Indiana link south so I want to click that I'll click the wires X pass through in this case a room does access to wires X and then you can change through that I'll go ahead and click apply changes. Go through and you just kind of double make sure all your settings are the way you want it. And it looks like they're good for me. So I'm gonna come scroll all the way up to the top and click on dashboard. Okay, and then here's your dashboard. So right here it showed that it was already connected on YSF to America link and you have some people talking already and it showed it showed you where it changed it so I'm going to then you see here where it says DMR repeater it has my DMR ID the color code and then the talk group talk, or not talk group but time slot 2 is enabled so you always talk through time slot two on your DMR radios each time. Whenever you configure your, your channels for your to talk to your hotspot, you need to make sure you set it for time slot two. And you can see right here where it says no talk group or no reflector. Okay, that's when you go to your radio. And then you'll select a talk group and you'll keep. And then you can see I just connected to talk group 310. About a thousand percent better, Bruce. And there's people talking, so you know you did it right. Okay. All right. I'll back to square one on the microphone cord. Okay. Thanks a lot. Got okay. And then anytime you want to change the talk group, you just turn your dial on your radio, wait till they're done talking, then key up. And I'll switch. Um, I have created my own talk group, and it's three one two one nine one five. And just program that into your 
DMR radio underneath your contacts as you would program a talk group in. And I monitor that one quite a f frequently. So maybe I will catch you on the air sometime. And then on the YSF network, it just shows you a link to this one. I'm linked to that room already. When you key up on your Yezu radio, your call sign will pop up here and it'll say YSF. Um, each time you key up, it'll say what mode it's in or DMR. And there's lights on the some spot to know which one is which. So if you have any questions, drop them down there in the comment section. I'll try to answer them the best, best I can. And please like, comment, share this video. Um, hopefully it helps you out with configuring a zoom spot. I know it can be tricky, but this is just how I learned how to do it. And it's worked for me so far. And again, please subscribe to the channel if you do view more content like this. Comment, tell me what you think of the video. And if you have any questions, drop them in there. If you know anybody having problems with a zone spot and with configuring it, and I will try to point them in the right direction. I will help you out as best I can. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.